So now that your WordPress site is set up, we're now ready to log in to the WordPress dashboard. To do this on any site, you'll often find that the URL at the top of the page, which I've highlighted here, is where you would need to access the administration dashboard. Now, depending on how this was set up with your original host, or if it was set up by yourself following our previous instruction guide, you will be able to see there's different options here to do this. The default option or the way it's set up, the URL is simply your domain name forward slash WP hyphen admin. And whenever you load this, this will take you to a, a administration page. Now, just an example here, I've loaded our profile tree one. Of course, um, I have my inputs already put in just for the purpose of this video, but whenever you set this up, you will be presented with the option to create your username and email address. This also will include the password. Um, by default, again, on WordPress, the password is normally a key generated, so it may be a bit more difficult. Again, if someone else has set the WordPress site up for you, do contact your host or your administration um, to get these details. Essentially, all you need to do next is follow the links below by hitting login and continue into the WordPress dashboard. Now that you're successfully logged into the WordPress dashboard, things may look a little confusing and a bit um, complex at times. And over this series of these videos, this will become a lot more natural and a lot more easy to understand. And we'll start just by quickly breaking down the dashboard itself. You'll see a few things and then we'll come through these as we go on through the tutorial. You will often find on a new WordPress theme, or a WordPress install, you will see the default widgets presented just here. Firstly, the, the most basic and most natural little default that will appear will be the Welcome to WordPress widget. And as part of this widget, you get a few options just to help you get started. Of course, with your theme and your sites, you can obviously choose to customize your theme if you've had one pre-installed, change your theme completely and set up a brand new theme or actually continue on the next steps. And this includes except adding a new page, adding a blog post or maybe an article tag, or even just simply viewing the site and how it sits at the moment. Now, an easy way to do this or a quick way that we find is if you go to the top left, you'll see the home uh, window. So you do open this, just right click and open a new tab. And you'll see straight away that the site will open um, as it currently sits. Now, bear in mind, this is a site that we've worked on and we've done some work um, just to try and give you a head start here to see what it will look like in the end. The idea here is that you will have a default theme. Um, if you choose to install this or set this up as you went through the process, you will notice your theme will appear here with the content included in the theme also. So that's an easy way just to quickly jump um, back and forward between them. Of course, you do still have the toolbar at the top. So every time you're logged in as a administrator or an admin on the WordPress site, on the top bar, you will see the toolbar here. And in this toolbar, you have multiple options. For instance, if you'd like to edit the page, you can go into this and you can actually see the page by itself. Again, I'll come back to this later because I want to spend more time on individual pages and content here. But quickly going back um, to our original page, you see the toolbar. Again, multiple options and different plugins may appear here as you install them. But what we'll do for now is simply to return to the dashboard, simply highlight the profile tree, or again, in your case, the name of your website, and go to the dashboard. So again, this is the first place that you will appear. And one of the first things we would recommend doing once you have got onto the site is go straight to your settings. And that's where this tutorial video will go today and we will discuss the settings. In settings, simply select general. From general settings, you will see a list of options, especially on the general settings page. The first being the site title. The site title is important for a few reasons. First of all, it will show your users, your subscribers, any content creators, and other people that are working on the site, especially in the dashboard area, the title page, um, or the site title, of course. But not only that, it will also link to your SEO for Google. So obviously, of course, how you appear in the Google search results or in Bing search results um, as the title of the site itself. So it's crucial that something is put in here that's relevant, um, that it is the name of your website or the company that you want to advertise. Of course, the tagline can all be seen, also be seen as the description for the site. So make sure this is appropriately named also. Simply just explain what the site is about. Now, for this purpose of this video, we've just named this as development build. Just to emphasize what the site is for. Um, the WordPress address URL and site address URL. Again, depending on how the site was installed and how it was set up, this is something to be careful with. Especially if you're not dealing with the hosting side of things.
And what this simply means is if your site is on one particular host or on one, one of their servers, the site will load from that location. And the site address is the address URL that's used for when visitors are actually coming to the site. Now, if these are different, it can sometimes cause issues, especially when it comes to making changes on the site or depending on where it's being loaded from. So do check this out with your host or with the technical setup that you've used. The contact email address, now I've blurred this out just to show my email address here, but what this is simply for again, is so that you can have your site set up and for admin purposes, you will receive email notifications. This can be things like pingbacks, trackbacks, but also new user notifications. If a new user joins the WordPress site where it gets added, you will be able to see who it was and what's been done. Now, of course, you won't be able to see finer details like their passwords, but you will be notified that a change has been made, such as a password. Now, of course, membership and new user default are very easy to understand. What this simply means is it can, first of all, can users register for your website? And from that, how do they enroll in the site? So simply, what is their role or what is their function within the, the website itself? Now, of course, we have this set to the default, which is subscriber, but you can change this to anything. Now, if you notice your site, for instance, um, or an example would be an e-commerce or a shop, and there's only really going to be two people working on the site, you being the owner and the other being maybe a, a technical developer or someone who would be more working with the design. Everyone can just be an, an administrator. It's really not a big issue. On the other hand, though, if you were a content site and you were posting a lot of articles or maybe news reports, you may want to set this as an author um, so that when new, user, new users are added, they can't make f finer details to the site itself. So there's no problem of destroying or ruining content. Only the admin or the administrator can access those. So author is sometimes a better option for this, but it really is down to yourself. Then under the next stage then, as, as you can see, is of course, is the time zone, date format and time format. Again, very easy to understand here. Of course, set this to your default where your location is. Of course, if you want to target a certain area or if you have more team members or staff that are working on the site in a different location, I would recommend using theirs. But this is not really a big thing. Where it can make a difference though is the date format and the time format. And what this again is for is any content that's published. Of course, a lot of themes now will include the date it was either published or the date it was modified. And here you can change that. So again, if you're here in the UK or Europe, you would often go by day, month, and year. Um, for those in the America and the US, you may have this change to month, day, and year. So this is really down to personal preference and really the target audience that you're going to be drawing attention to and the region you're going to be targeting. So if, again, your site is mainly targeted towards um, United States, then you may want to have this change to month, day, and year, and vice versa for Europe and the UK, change this to day, month, and year. And again, time, as you can see, is also of an option. You can change this around to be a 24-hour clock, a 12-hour clock, or whatever is suitable for yourself. It is really down to yourself. You do have the options. And that's the general settings. Moving on down to writing then. So writing, what this is for is mainly your email and how emails are read by WordPress by default. This is one area that a lot of people will, will almost neglect and leave behind as there is a lot of support pages like MailChimp and plugins you can come to later. And we will come to these later when it comes to the plugins as part of our process. For we have left ours for default. It's a post category, it's not really used and worked. We use other uh, contact forms and custom contact forms to do this ourselves. But if you wish, of course, do set up a mail server with a login name and password. And here you can access different processes and, and features that are part of the site. Moving on to reading, one of the most important pages that is often left behind and those wonder why that certain things aren't working. Once the site is up and running, you might not need to do this now, but once your site is up and running, you will definitely want to set this to be a static page depending on the, the site that you want to run. So for instance, if you're wanting to run a blog website, you may want to leave this as just your latest posts. So any of your post content will appear as a, the, the home screen itself. It really will be a blog site. Most websites though that are based on a WordPress template or WordPress theme, often we use a static page. And you can see from ours, the front page, which is your, your landing page, this is your home page, will, must be defined. So here you can see a list of all the pages that we have within Profile Tree, but of course we'll leave this to be the home page. 
The post page is where your articles and all your content is going to appear. Now again, if your website is not going to be publishing posts or content like that, it's not a worry. Do you have a page for it? Because WordPress tries to find one. It's a part of the WordPress engine that it will try and use some form of post content. So do you have a page here for this? But again, if you don't use it, if you don't activate it, it's absolutely fine. But have one there. Even if you don't put it on the site, it's fine. Blog pages show at most five posts. Uh, again, just a general thing here. This is just simply if you have a page, how far, how many posts do you want to, to display on that page? Whether it's five posts all with small excerpts or it's 10 posts. This is completely down to your personal preference and how you view the site. Now, personally, here at Profile Tree, we try to keep it so it's minimal. Um, not too much content on a page as users and guests make it um, mislaid and just put it off the fact that there's a lot of content. Um, again, each article, um, how is it displayed? So we have it on full text. We have used a bit of custom code in our plugin that gives us uh, excerpts, which will obviously cut down a lot of the text to let you click on it. If you get a small preview, then you can click to read the full article. Um, again, you can change this yourself depending on the theme or plugin that you used. Finally, search engine visibility. For testing purposes and for development, we would often recommend to leave this as discourage. However, if you're wanting to build the site and try and drive traffic and populate it, you will want to have this unticked. And this is just to allow Google and Bing and your, your many browsers to find your site, to have it indexed um, within the search engine. So it's crucial that this is unticked. And you'll often find a lot of plugins, a lot of SEO plugins will ensure that this is unticked because if it is they will flag it as an error it's an easy thing to do but just be aware of that one discussion this is more so if you would have a lot of um customer client feedback and uh, quite often this is used in forums and comment boxes and you'll see a lot of these again are, are pretty basic and easy to go through but it's simply just a few things we'll quickly fly through through for you so first of all the ability to notify of any blogs or link to the article. So this is referred to often as pingbacks and trackbacks. And what that simply means is if someone else links to this blog um, or puts a link inside your comments, you will notice you'll get a, an email notification about this. And this is the same from other blogs too. This also includes the ability to allow users to post comments on articles, often sometimes can even be guests too. So they may not have to register, but again, you have the flexibility and you can see on that note, the tick box just below here, users must be registered and logged in to comment. So you can have this unticked, so anyone can make a comment. The brilliant thing about WordPress is a fantastic feature which allows you to do is moderation. Comment moderation is fantastic as it allows you to monitor the comments that are coming in. So things like spam, inappropriate contents can all be blocked before they're actually publicly po uh, posted. And it's a great way to keep an eye on things. Also just monitor your site, how things are moving, how is the site performing, and a lot more features available there. You can also change a few things, the avatar, the display, and what type of content is being posted. So if you think you're a bit more of a PG website, or there's more um, possibly inappropriate content for younger audiences, you can change that just here. So a lot of options, a lot of features, but what we're gonna come into later on in the series of these videos is plugins. And this is where plugins really kick off with WordPress and can really help you develop your site to build a custom, custom build and website that's fitted for you and for everything that you need. So stay tuned whenever those videos come up and we'll give you a link if you sign up to your email newsletter, you'll be able to receive all our latest posts. Keep up to date with these and you'll receive some of the content that comes with that. Moving on to media then, media is just the basic settings. Um, whenever you upload um, a photo or an image to WordPress, you'll notice that the, there's a media library, which is often stored on the WordPress server. Um, this is one thing you need to be careful of. Um, working in WordPress, especially with the profile tree as well, you need to be very careful about the amount of images that you upload onto your WordPress site. Now we'll come back to this later on, but WordPress will cut down an image and make multiple thumbnails and smaller images in size. Thus, all these images add up and can expand the, the size of your site, thus affect your resources and put a lot of pressure on your website. So it's good to try and monitor this if you can. Some of the things here is you can set default uh, sizes um, for when images are added to the library, such as your thumbnail size, um, medium uh, image size and large sizes. So these are default and can be changed and you can organize these. Um, as you see fit. Of course, um, best practice for uploading images to websites or WordPress 
is to try and see if you can cut it down and manipulate it yourself first in some form of photo editing or photo manipulation software. Photoshop is the most prime example, but there's other free alternatives out there that you can use. Permalinks. So permalinks are simply how your URL is displayed uh, in your browser. Important feature to look into here. So simply this is just again linking back to what type of website or what type of genre of site you are. So if it's an e-commerce, if it's an article, if it's a post site, or if it's just a general infographic or informational site. As part of this process, you will see different options, post name. Um, this would display all your pages as they would normally be displayed. So simply with the domain, the name of the site, followed by the name of the post. The alternative here is you can have the date, month, day that it was published um, or modified. Again, this can be customized later. Of course, you can also change this. So it's a fantastic website called WordPress Codex, where you can actually go in and create your own custom structure. Now you'll see here we've done this. So simply all this is gonna read is the domain name followed by the post name. And all that'll simply mean is if you've titled an individual article or post, we want that to be displayed in the URL rather than any dates or any categories that, that come up. And this is really to keep in line with SEO as we want to drive traffic to that individual post. So that is now the WordPress settings complete. The WordPress dashboard is a fantastic service you can work with. There's mul multiple areas and changes that you may see from different WordPress updates and changes that follow with WordPress itself. Now, of course, other plugins will also make various differences within your settings. Of course, as you can see below, I have skipped them for the process of this video, but BuddyPress and TinyMCE. Now, these are extra plugins that have added these into the general settings, but these settings here are the main general settings when you install a fresh version of WordPress that will appear. General, writing, reading, discussion, media, and permalinks. And from that, that is our tutorial on settings complete. If you have any further questions or you want to know more, on going through the WordPress settings, please stay tuned for more, or simply send us an email at Profile Tree, and you'll find our contact page just listed below and above these videos, and you'll be able to see the description below for more information on how you can access or find out more.